history is on the march. So the man that brought you Lucy in the fifth element, a classic to me, is now back. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. I remember when I first saw this trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I was like, man, this kind of reminds me of the fifth element. And then like a few seconds after that, a subtitle came up talking about Luke Besson, the director of the fifth element. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on board with this because I love the fifth element. And I remember back when I was, uh, I think I was in junior high when, yeah, junior high when this movie, not this movie, but uh, the fifth element came out. And I was listening to K104 because I'm here in Dallas or whatever. And it was a radio contestant that was like, uh, like the radio jockey was like, or the DJ was like, yeah, you win, you won the new tickets to go see Chris Tucker in the fifth element or whatever. Aren't you excited? And he was like, yeah, woo, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm excited because back then no black people were interested in seeing the fifth element or at least in my world. But when the movie came out and everybody saw it, it, it kind of became a cult classic and it's like, Everybody loved it. Everybody slept on that movie and had, you know, um, their expectations. Uh, but the movie ended up being amazing. And I love Luke Besson, you know, for that movie. Uh, I also did like Lucy. Um, a lot of people didn't like that movie, but I actually had some fun with it. So, you know, now we're back for Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. And when I first heard that title, I was like, how the hell do you fit um, a thousand planets in a city? But early on in the film, they explain that, you know, what that means and I like it or whatever. And, you know, what this movie is about is just like the title suggests is there is a city that is being built in space and it started in the 70s. And what it is, is a thousand different civilizations and different species from all four corners of the universe are come are bringing represents uh, rep are bringing people that represent their race and their species over and sharing their infinite knowledge with everybody. Everybody's just sharing all their knowledge, all their technology, science, whatever, in one large community. And it's just peaceful. And just, you know, imagine, you know, how how fruitful that would be or whatever. So they did that early on in the film. And I really did like that. It's very easy to follow, very easy to understand. And some mysterious force, uh, some this. Uh, crazy character from around the way is just trying to destroy all that and that is the base basic premise of this movie the two leads in this movie are dane dehan and cara delavine um I, you know i'm a fan of both of them carla delavine she was in suicide squad and i didn't like that movie but she was also in paper towns uh dane dehan he first popped up on my radar with chronicle that came out a number of years ago and he was also the hobgoblin or the green goblin or harry osborne in the re on the uh spider-man uh franchise with Andrew Garfield and I'm not Andrew Garfield and what was the director's name? Uh, Mark Mark Webb or whatever. And they're the two leads and I, I like them. There isn't really too much of their character. Um, they do have a, a cute relationship. Um, I do like that. They are a couple. Luke, um, not, not Luke Besson, Dane DeHaan's character, um, a major Valerian. Um, he's very confident, but a little clueless when it comes to the emotion of women. And I like that not because he's clueless, just because that kind of, you know, makes his character more human. When we're watching these people fly around in space, you know, that's just something to ground you and give you something to relate to. As far as all the effects are concerned, this is some of the best that I've ever seen. Well, it, it, it's in the league of the best. It's not the best, but it's up there. Uh, if you want to see this movie, I recommend you do it on the biggest uh, screen possible. And I really want to give it to Luke Besson with his creativity and how he designed all the different aliens and and their landscape and where they come from and their biology it was really creative. I mean, you will see seven or eight different aliens and species that are just so abstract and abnormal to anything that we've seen before here on Earth. And then, you know, he will give you double that and triple that even more. I mean, it was a true testament of how, you know, vast his imagination is, especially in the beginning when he, they're showing all these species, you know, work together. You know, and I, I really did like that. So the visuals were great. The story itself was pretty good, too. Um, you can kind of tell that this is an ongoing series. I don't know if this is a comic or a book or both, 
but I can tell if there are more chapters um, to be told within this uh, franchise. And, you know, if there are more stories to be told, hey, bring it on because I really did enjoy this. Uh, one thing that I did not like is this movie was far too long. It came in in two hours and 17 minutes, and they could have easily shoved off 30 minutes of this. Um, there was one scene in particular where one character had to rescue the other, and it was fine, but it didn't add anything to it. There was no, you know, no new revelation to be had. There was no new character development, or they found some secret power over here. I mean, they're just, you know, flying down the highway, you know, looking beautiful on the highway with their wings out soaring. This is the movie I'm speaking of. But then they just pull over to the side of the road, you know, to uh, make a little pit stop. And that pit stop was unnecessary. There was nothing at that pit stop that was beneficial to keep them going, you know, back on the road. So, you know, they could have at least shaved 30 minutes off. Um, at one point in the film, I kind of was like, OK, we're world building now and they've built the world. But what is the plot of this film? What is the point besides who is trying to destroy um, the city of a thousand planets because they did not reveal who the villain was until the very end of the movie and that can work sometimes and it can't work in this film it would have worked better in my opinion if they would have uh, let you know more early on in the film because there was a point where I was kind of like okay we're just kind of sitting here you know watching the characters you know go on about their day but I really can't grab on to anything I don't know what the point is I don't know where we're going but overall guys I really did enjoy the film um, it, it is a great, nice uh, little science fiction action adventure. Um, it did give you a great example of uh, future technology and what can be accomplished. There was one part where they, towards the beginning, where they were sh uh, doing shopping in a different dimension. And the contraptions and the devices they used, you know, that spoke volumes to me. And I really did enjoy that. So it, it is a, um, it looks great visually. Um, I did like the characters for the most part. The story was pretty good, uh, too. Um, but there were some parts to where I was like, okay, you know, why are we here? What's going on? But overall, I did enjoy the film. If I had to rate this out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets? You know, do you want to? Do you not? Do, did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click that bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. You can go to my website, bookmark it, check me out there, and also look me up on social media. And guys, it's Friday. And I cannot wait for to, to tomorrow to where the Black Panther trailer will be released via Marvel and Disney on their Hall H panel. When the first te teaser trailer dropped during uh, game, um, was it January? Not January, June 9th, during game four of the NBA Finals. I was blown away and it was just a teaser. So I'm like super duper excited for new footage coming tomorrow. Like, I mean, this is my most anticipated movie in life. I'm a black guy, and that movie comes out in Black History Month. This has never been done before. I love Marvel. I love comics. I love Black Panther. I mean, like, seriously, this is my most anticipated movie in life. Like, I mean, I, I'm I'm probably going to cry in the theater or whatever. This is from the, my level of excitement. If I had a chance, I would love to be on the red carpet with all the fans. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, whether I'm on the uh, on the red carpet or on the side with the fans, either is uh, okay with me. But, of course, I would rather be there with the stars and why am i bringing this up because you can help me get there by sharing this video 1000 times it is a long shot yeah but hey i'm going for it and guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for valerian in the city of a thousand planets and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace <laughs>